Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Daria Venediktova. I'm a researcher at the Fundamental Laboratory of Smolensk State Medical University. And today I would like to present the results of our study, Combined Ultrasound Elastography versus Computer Tomography in Patients with Non-Alcoholic Fetal Liver Disease. Currently, obesity is a significant problem in modern society. So, according to the World Health Organization, there is a pronounced increase in the population in most countries. Overweight and obese patients have a large number of complications and comorbidities, including non-alcoholic fetal liver disease or NAFLD. And currently this term is understood as an independent nosological unit, the pathogenesis of which is based on the phenomena of insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia and have different uh, spectrum of changes in liver parenchyma from steatosis through hepatitis, fibrosis to liver cirrhosis and even hepatocellular carcinoma. Yes, there is a large number of methods for the diagnosis of NAPOD. This is the collection of complaints and amnesis, biomarkers, and instrumental methods, but they all have limitations. Of course, liver biopsy with a histological analysis with NAS and set scales is the gold standard, but there are some disadvantages that not many patients agree to make it even if they have hepatitis or fibrosis. So the purpose of this study is to compare diagnosis effectiveness of combined ultrasound elastography and computer tomography in quantitative liver evaluation in overweight patients. All patients were examined according to a single diagnostic algorithm, which included non-invasive bioimpedance, some MDCT, a large complex of liver ultrasound examinations, and dual energy X-ray absorption tree in the whole body mode. Additional research methods are presented on the slide, and liver biopsy was performed in 57 patient. 184 overweight patients with liver stadosis according to the data of MDCT were included. Also, we need patients with visceral obesity, which was determined using ultrasound in B mode after oral contrasting of the stomach with uh, degassed liquid. You can see the formula on the slide. 100 patients, uh, 104 patients were in control group. All the including criteria also presented on the slide. MDCT evaluation of liver was performed only during chest CT and during abdominal CT when NFLD wasn't the main indication for the um, study because of high radiation exposure. And when we talk about MDCT in liver statosis evaluation, we remember about criteria um, when we speak about liver density, spleen density, and uh, the comparison of this density with um, uh, big vessels of liver. We also know that ultrasound diagnostics, which varies most, is actively used for screening and dynamic monitoring of patients with chronic liver disease. And even using simple B mode of ultrasound, we can talk about different grades of liver steatosis depending on liver, periportal, and diaphragmatic echogenesis. The hepatorenal index is one step visualization, and its capabilities in liver steatosis are higher because we have some quantitative analysis. So the data are, are also presented on this slide. And liver fibrosis was quantified in kilopascal using the method of shear wave uh, ultrasound elastography. Um, and the standardization of the results was carried out using an elastographic ruler of Professor Borsakov version 2. Noteworthy is the fact that shear wave ultrasound elastography is most effective in the seventh and sixth segments of the liver, and deeper diagnosis in obese patients can be difficult. Recently, it became possible to carry out a new technique to estimate the attenuation coefficient of an ultrasound wave in tissues uh, with automatic calculation of the quantitative expression of fatty liver in decibel per centimeter. So, in patients with overweight and obesity, we can identify liver steatosis and assess the severity of fatty infiltration fibrosis. However, there is a missing piece of the NAFLD puzzle, inflammatory activity. This slide shows a study window within the framework of combined elastography, thanks to which it is possible to select the optimal zone of interest in the liver and assess steatosis, inflammatory process, and liver fibrosis. If the basic rules of the methodology are observed, the percentage of obtaining reliable information, of course, increases. All the data that we received were compared, taking into account the assessment of the degree of hepatic steatosis, both using MDCT. Uh, the sensitivity and specificity levels of elastography were really high. As you can see, the data obtained using both methods practically coincided also with liver biopsy data. 
A significant advantage of the combined elastography is the answer to question what about inflammation. Now we can assess also the uh, activity process. As NAFLD diagnosed in overweight and obese patients, so it's necessary to monitor dynamically not only the liver, but also the full picture of obesity. DEXA in whole body mode can be the perfect method because of its low radiation exposure. So combined uh, ultrasound elastography is an effective method for quantitative evaluation of liver steatosis, inflammation, and fibrosis in overweight patients. Uh, MDCT is effective method for quantitative evaluation, but not for dynamic monitoring. And DEXA in whole body mode can be used for dynamic monitoring of visceral fat in overweight patients. Limitations are presented on this slide, and I want to thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can write to my mail and we'll be glad to cooperate.